All right, this is the bouncy ball lab. First thing I'm gonna do, just put a little hand sanitizer on my hand just to make sure any germs that are on my hands don't get onto the lab equipment. So in this lab activity, you're gonna explore projectiles being thrown upward. Uh, so at each table, there will be a ruler, like this meter stick, and a bouncy ball. So a bouncy ball. Um, so drop the ball from a height of one meter. So the, at the end of this meter stick. Um, make sure you use the metric side of it. There we go. Uh, let's see here. The projectile uh, is being launched. Oh, it will bounce on the table and launched uh, up and go back down. Uh, this is a projectile being launched upward. So we're just looking at the time from that first bounce. It goes up, comes back down to that second bounce. Um, the height uh, that it bounces back up will be measured. So we're gonna just we're, we're not worried about the the downward motion when it hits the table. We're just worried about when it bounces, come back up and comes back down. All right. So the ruler is used to measure length. What is the resolution of this ruler? Does the ruler have an uncertainty digit? Why or why not? So we're gonna be using that metric side. So remember, the resolution is the smallest interval that can be measured by an instrument. So how much do each one of these little tick marks represent? Right. So those big numbers are centimeters. Uh, but what do those little tick marks represent and does it have an uncertainty digit why or why not? Okay, so the next one says drop the ball uh, from the top of the meter stick record the bounce height in centimeters uh, Run three trials and find the average bounce height convert the average bounce height into meters Then calculate the time it took the ball to bounce from the table to the height of the peak Okay, so on this one what we're gonna do is we run three trials right so I Put it up at one meter, and then we're going to measure the height that it bounces up to. Uh, so we're going to run three trials just to, just uh, just so we can average them out. So I'm going to drop it from one meter. I'm going to have to stand a little bit for this one. Drop it. Okay. Oh, I hit the. Uh, let's drop it. Okay. So that one went up to. Uh, I'm going to say 60 centimeters, right? So you do that three times. Uh, so you're going to see about 60 centimeters. Um, there we go. Okay, that went up to about 60 centimeters. So for just this example, we'll use just 60 centimeters for all three trials. If you're doing that at home, you can use uh, that. But, you know, some of them might have gone up to 61, 62, 63. We want to get as precise as possible because we're going to be calculating it. But uh, just for an example, we'll use 60 centimeters. Now, then it says convert the average bound height into meters. So you have to use that metric conversion chart. And what you have to do is you have to move the decimal over uh, to the left, uh, uh, two spaces. So 60 centimeters becomes 0 0.60, uh, and you have to include 0, 0 for those, uh, the resolution uh, to get those significant figures. Um, then what you're going to do is calculate the time that it takes to get to the peak. Use those kinematic equations. So we're just looking at the time that it bounces to the time it just gets to the peak just before it starts to go back down. Now, this conclusion question says, how could the total time the ball is in the air from the first bounce to the second bounce be found? Explain your answer. So you just have to know about projectiles being thrown up or what paths does it take. So the moment it gets to the first bounce, all the way up, comes back down to the second bounce. How could you find the time that it takes to do that? Um, and then identify any random errors that were or could have been in this experiment. Did the random errors affect the accuracy or precision of this experiment? What was done or could be done to mitigate the random errors in this experiment? So I'll give you a hint. There was a random error, and uh, we did the one thing that you can do to reduce random error. All right, so I'm just going to get a little hand sanitizer just to re-sanitize my hands. And once again, this has been the Bouncy Ball Lab.